2017 was 78% and that was for round one. Let's not talk about uh, round, the round two election. Mm. And then if you look at uh, the 2002 election that got uh, Kibaki in, the turnout was 57%. Whoa. So when you're talking about a probability of about uh, 70%, mm. uh, as in we'll definitely vote, that's pretty okay compared to the historical perspective. In 70 of... is those who have said, I will definitely vote. Yes. And then there's a percentage who, who said, I may probably vote. Prob uh, yes. Probably uh, the, what was the percentage? Uh, that was um, 13%. Okay. Probably. Okay. So, is it okay to combine those two? You can. Seven, 70 plus 13 and going to 83% <laughs> probable. <laughs> Depends on that you see the, the glass is half full or half empty. Definitely <laughs> probable turnouts <laughs> of 80% and above. Do you ever figure out why it is the probables are probable and uh, why they, they're, they're not, like, not likely, likely, are likely are not likely? Um, uh, it, it, okay, we can only imply we can only basically infer from the data yeah. yeah so when we look at some of the people they're saying they've not decided who, who they'll vote for mm. and they're still waiting to hear more from the candidates in terms of uh, enabling them to get out and vote and then there's also a small percentage who have concerns about whether the election will be free and fair mm. so that makes them say either will not vote or probably of these reasons vote. which reason have we found to take the poll position which one stands out the reasons that people give so um if you look at the the, la the last election uh, the last poll we did around uh, may the issue was waiting for the candidates manifestos uh to be launched that has happened now <laughs> we're talking about uh the ability to see that the election will be free and fair and that percentage is not very high it's a small percentage why i ask the question is because i wonder do we actually vote for those reasons that people tell you that they are undecided for or like the manifestors yes that's a good question because people people purport to have logical reasons for voting for candidates yes. but then when they go to the ballot box the reasons they vote are illogical well, so it, well it has there's reason behind it you see mm. that's why i asked the initial question about whether we can determinedly say that what people respond to when you call them represents what they will actually do that's why I asked. But you cannot argue with data. Okay? Mm -hmm. I mean, you can try if you want to, but data speaks volumes. Mm -hmm. Because if what you... Your respondents told you was their thoughts on these matters and it represents the actual outcome and you can see this correlation, then you can't argue with it. Mm -hmm. But then, do we know how many of those who indicated that they were undecided or were thinking about it, how many of them actually cross over? Because in this election, it seems the undecided seem to be, the number seems to be significant. Mm -hmm. and significant to the point where if they shift, they could actually make a big change. If, if the undecideds are below the margin of error, because mm. our data is plus or minus 2.7% margin of error, if the undecideds are below, then you can say, you know what, we know how we can predict this election accurately based on the opinion. But this one we can't. This one we can't. And mm. there's no way of telling how the undecided will vote. We don't know whether there's going to be something major that will happen between now and the election date that mm -hmm. could shift. Just 27 days away. Exactly. Anything could happen. Maggie, oh, yes. is there anything major that has happened between February and June? February, the undecided were 20%. It's half of that now. The main thing that has happened is the uh, naming of the running mates mm. and the um, coming up with the manifestos. Those are the main things that have happened. But and have they shifted those who are undecided into making a decision? Yes, they are inc increasingly. And I'm not saying those are the only two factors. Mm -hmm. There could be others, but those are the two major factors that we see. And so if I can give you an example, yes. yeah. um, when um, just before the running mates were named, quite a number of people were saying they were undecided. So when we did a poll and we asked people, uh, were you undecided before? And some of them would say, yes, we were. What has made you decide? It's a running mate. And I'm not saying it, uh, it, they told us who was better, yeah. but I think that not only it's clear how the ticket will be, mm -hmm. then they can make a decision. Okay. So then there has been an impact on Martha Karua's choice as running mate. In, in ensuring, and, and I'm, I'd like to say both. Because eh? I'm saying, uh, okay, yeah, go ahead. I'd like to say both in making people decide 
they've converted the undecided. Mm -hmm. I'm not saying it's one uh, of the running mates. Okay. Yes. But then, if you look at then at the other figures, mm -hmm. so if Raila was at 27% in February and is now at 42% and the undecided have gone down by 10%, then you can say, okay, one of the reasons would be maybe the figures are coming from somewhere. He's 20, he's 27 to 42 must be coming from somewhere. It's either coming from the undecided, those that did not give a response, or those that were for the other candidates, which was none in February, or those that were in William Ruto, who has dropped from, no, who has actually increased from 38 in February to 39 so, in June. So what that means so it's is undecided somebody has a harvested, and no response. Somebody has harvested more than the other from the undecided and the response it seems to be the Raila camp because mm. there's a 15 percent jump mm -hmm. but so has the deputy president because mm. his numbers have also increased mm. the fundamental difference is that the former prime minister has gathered more mm -hmm. so how then do you say that the appointment of their running mates has not had an impact on yes. his mm -hmm. yes ticket okay <laughs> okay so what we're saying the appointment of his running mate, of course, has added has an advantage. Mm. But also, what you're seeing is poaching, as in there's a certain percentage of respondents who have moved from uh, one presidential candidate to another, right. a certain amount. So we cannot say a hundred percent. It's because of the running mate, mm. and these things could continue. You may find that today somebody, and I'm not saying it's a majority, a minority mate say today I'm supporting candidate A. After a few weeks they change, depending on some of the things that are happening in the campaign trail. Something which I consider interesting to the point of being concerning, the low turnout of something like the coast. The 57% you speak of is a representative of registered voters. Mm -hmm. Okay, Do you take the time to find out why it is that there is a low turnout? Low Intended. definite intention to Intended. turn out. Yes. Mm. Um, you see, I think I, I, I talked about this. It's the perception. The perception whether the election will be fair and fair. On, on Tuesday mornings, I'm a bit slow. So, <laughs> so, 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 so please. Especially it. after a long weekend. Yes. Yeah. So it's, it's an issue of perception. Perception that the elections may not be fair and fair. And I'm not saying it's a big percentage. Um, election uh, Perception that uh, uh, perhaps there are some things that have been happening on the campaign trail that are making them uh, change their mind or become concerned about uh, the elections. And also what we see, and here I'm going to... Um, get some insights from the data we find that the intention to vote is lower amongst women as compared to men mm. so does that mean that women are going to be bogged down in the house doing household issues taking care of kids as compared to men or do women don't want to go to NQ or is there going to be possible uh, chaos at the polling stations so we find more women have a lower intention to get out and vote then the other category that has a low intention to get out and vote even though they're registered are the youth the, so the it could be even below yes it could be apathy perhaps i mean i'm registered but maybe i may not uh end up exercising voting. their rights exactly. could it be indicative that the candidates none of the campaigns seems to be addressing the issues that matter to these people if you look at that 57 percent intention to vote in the coast is not good if you compare with the other regions say 69 percent in mount kenya which you say that already is like a lower intention to vote compared to the other uh, elections if you compare to say nairobi and nyanza and uh, western western mm -hmm. and say like uh, the central rift or the north rift there's a there's a huge disparity here in terms of those who intend to come out and vote in the coast what would be the reason beyond that could it also be that they don't sure. feel that the candidates are addressing the issues that really matter to them and also just to add on to that historically the coast has always had a lower voter turnout mm. even in the last election and i agree with you it could be that maybe none of the candidates has addressed their issues to a certain extent that they feel compelled to turn out and vote one of the issues at the coast is a land issue that has been going on for many many years presidential candidates promise to sort out the issues but it doesn't and i think you saw that in the last when um uh, Rayla Odinga was naming part of his lineup yeah he uh, named uh, Hassan Joho as a person who will be the potential cabinet secretary of lands but in spite of that we're still seeing that the voter turnout <laughs> is low mm. so i agree with you that <laughs> there is something that none of the two are doing that is compelling the people at the coast to turn out in spite of all the effort that they've done. You see, um, 
a lot of campaign uh, activities at the coast, yeah. a lot of things happening, but... Let me ask the question. Just like they could be individual candidates who spur the electorate to want to vote, is it possible that the voter turnout intention can be dampened by individuals as well? Meaning, mm. this one people don't like. Or they, <laughs> they, 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 if this is the person... Uh, an, an inspirational candidate. Completely uninspiring. Mm. That's why I'm referring to dampening. Because someone says, if this is what we're going for, forget it. I'd rather, I'd rather not bother. Perhaps. But also, let me also give you another example. Assuming, and mm. this is assuming, mm. assuming Sonko is not allowed to run in Mombasa, uh, and the person who will be the ODM flag bearer will be Abdul Samad, isn't it? Yeah. Mm. Uh, the next person, I, I, can't, I don't even know the number three in terms of competing with him. If he is given that, if he's the only person running on that ballot box, this is so a number of UDA. Yes, mm. but in terms of our polls, he's not showing that he's, he's he doesn't even get above ten percent. Doctor Kingi of power. Who, who doesn't get above ten percent? Hassan Omar. He doesn't get uh, and, above ten percent. Mm. So and what Kingi. you yeah what you yeah. have is the last time we did a poll, it's either the two, Hassan uh, not Hassan Omar Abdul Samad or Sonko. Or Sonko. If Sonko doesn't run. It will be so obvious that the next governor is going to be Abdul Samad. So the question is, will he campaign for himself as much? Will he campaign for the party as much? Because if a ticket is already given, then the campaign activity uh, <laughs> ends up being uh, not as competitive as before. And that could dampen mm. the voter turnout. I'm, glad. I'm just, this is just a hypothesis. Oh, no, no. I, <laughs> let's go with the hypothesis. There's a witty of which party? Uh, and he's a former MP of Nyali. He knows how to campaign. So all these are not are not showing up no, they're not. in the polls. They're not. Aye. Yeah. They are only. Aye. They are two horses. So, so are you saying that this is party affiliation? Because really, mm. the individuals may not even be known, but the party has had a historical position. The party has been dominant in. Uh, let's see. I'm talking about Mombasa. Mombasa ODM can. is dominant in Mombasa. Mm. Uh, Azimio is also now dominant in Mombasa. Are they? Yes, th we have polls showing that. Mm. Now, How dominant? Um, I would have to check, but me, if you compare the, the Azimio as a coalition, Azimio as a coalition. Mm. Me, okay, let's talk about the the support for Abdul Samad and Sonko. Mm. The difference is about uh, fifteen percent, mm -hmm. which is quite high. So Sonko is in the twenties. Abdul Samad must be in the forties. Um, now, if you combine Abdul Samad and Sonko, both of them are in Azimio. Yeah, aren't they? They are parties. Yeah. So mm -hmm. you combine them. So assuming Sonko is not there, of course, most of the support will go to uh, Abdul Samad. Samad. So yeah. we assume. So, so yes, this is. A, I, I'm saying this is a hypothesis. I, I understand. And, yeah. and 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 most of these presidential candidates are depending on their people on the ground to campaign for them. Let me give you another example. Nairobi, Nairobi. Uh, there, we did a poll in Nairobi, and the person who is leading is. Um, Sakaja in the poll, mm. but in terms of the party, the party that is leading in Nairobi is Azimio. Mm -hmm. So you find that Sakaja is also attracting many more people from out of his party. Now, you begin to ask yourself the question: When he's campaigning, is he campaigning for himself only? Mm. Does he campaign for the party? Does he campaign for the presidency? And will that motivate people to turn out? I feel that where there's high competition. Where the stakes are high, voter turnout will voter be high. Turnout is higher. Where the stakes are low, uh, let's wait for a lower voter turnout. So Kiricho may be different because we already have women candidates. <laughs> Governor seems room. to be a sure thing. Yeah. Yes, it could be. And and that's why eventually towards the end of the election you see and, and this I'm talking about the last election, yep. you find <laughs> that the presidential candidates coin an emotional issue. An emotional issue that will get you to wake up in the morning and vote. And it's not a logical issue that it's a manifestos or etc. etc. At the end of it all, there has been emotional push to get guys to turn out to, turn vote. Out to vote. You know that Mombasa race is an interesting one because, see, Sonko is one of these very he's an enigma of sorts. The the pull that Sonko seems to have with the electorate is something that one could argue even defies logic, and yet it actually doesn't. Mm. He seems to be one of these politicians who seems to have understood the fundamental and basic needs that most people have. If you look at the way he goes about physically campaigning, what he does, mm -hmm. it's something that people look at. He solves an, imme an immediate problem, and as far as they are concerned, that's good enough. Which tells me that he has understood that the majority of people who vote in this country don't want to, they're not interested in the future. <laughs> this future that people keep talking about, oh, we'll do this in the future, we'll do this in the future. No, no. They want someone who's going to solve the problem that they have currently. Which is? Yes, and what? if you can solve it, yeah. then they feel, ah, 
I mean, this guy gets it. Or maybe they want someone who can walk the f into the future with them from today. Walk into mm. by resonating with the present and showing that yes. you understand their present. Handhold me today and we walk together. Don't yes. tell me I'm, Ati, I'm going to do there this. There is the you. future. You <laughs> cross the river. <laughs> I'm waiting for you on the other side. I'm waiting for you on the other side. Mm. Wajakoya, Maggie. So Wajakoya was not showing in February. Wajakoya is showing in June. What's the percentage? Uh, his percentage is four uh, percent. So four percent. So the standard has done a story. If we are to assume a hundred percent voter turnout, twenty-two point one million voters, eight hundred and eighty thousand votes. Okay. Now, what does that what does that mean when 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 you look at this? Of course, it's coming from the undecided. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. As you said, also poaching from the other candidates. Uh, if you look at the demographic, are you able to tell what demographic is saying that I would vote for Wajakoya? Yeah, so if you look at the demographics that is intending to vote for Ajakoya, uh, so we've categorized the sample by 18 to 34, that is a youth, mm -hmm. and 35 plus. Wajakoya support, although it's small, the support amongst the youth is um, three times higher than the support he has uh, from the people aged 35 plus. So you can already see who he's attracting. Mm -hmm. and, and you remember this is a group that has did not register okay yeah. not many of them as many registered in the for as a voters yep. and for some reason in the they had their intention to vote is lower mm. but he's attracting that category of respondents